The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk and the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. The Frankie DeBusk Show is presented by your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. And now, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. With the sting of the three overtime loss still looming at, for the Pioneers against the Lenore Ryan Bears last week, they had to load the buses and head to Newberry, South Carolina to historic Setzler Field. Hello again, everyone. Welcome into the Frankie DeBus Show. I'm Ryan Staten to be joined by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus. A Tusculum Newberry series that is always thrilling to watch for a fan's perspective, but from this broadcaster's perspective, half the times the Pioneers have lost those games. It would be the 18th meeting. Last year it was a quagmire from Pioneer Field. A lot of rain and mud and it was 14-3 to through the first half. Newberry with the lead. Well, little did we know that that would be the game that would spark the Pioneers to win five of their final six games of the season. It would be a come from behind win, scoring at 14 unanswered in that second half to win the contest against the Newberry Wolves. It's kind of a similar feel to this game as well. Historic Setzler Field is always a great place to watch a game, but Newberry scored 21 straight points in the second half. The Wolves edged Tusculum by a final score of 38 to 31. It was the conference opener for Newberry. They improved to 3 and 1 on the year, now 1 and 0 in the league, and dropped the Pioneers to 1 and 3 and 0 and 2 in conference play. Plus, it snapped a three-game road winning streak for the Pioneers. The difference, Newberry on the ground, attacking the next-to-last worst rushing defense in the country. Newberry rushed for 336 yards on 66 carries and dominated the time of possession at 40 minutes and 42 seconds off the clock. Two Wolves had a pair of 100-yard games. Braxton Ivory, 108. Kevin Miller rushed for 100 yards through basically just two quarters. Tusculum quarterback Luke Lancaster, he passed for 298 yards and three touchdowns. He went 18 of 44 through the air with an interception and one fumble. That one interception was returned for a score. Two of Lancaster's scoring tosses covered 74 and 75 yards to sen senior Kenny Funny, who just seems to make big play after big play on a three-yard pass. He finished the game with four catches and 162 yards, already the conference leader in reception and receiving yards per game. Tusculum senior Justin Houston accounted for 11 receptions, the conference leader and national leader in receptions per game. He had 80 yards and a touchdown in the contest. Pioneers defensively had a lot of guys that really stepped up their play. Brandon Bartlett again, 11 tackles. Akeem Peoples, he had 11 tackles on the day. Iram Aiken, Emmanuel Bundley, they each finished with eight tackles on the day. But the Wolves still finished with 407 offensive yards and the Pioneers totaled 334 yards of offense in the contest. It was a game that went back and forth. There were defensive plays, there were offensive plays, and then there were just plays that won the game. We'll talk about all of that when we come back right after this with Pioneer Head Coach Frankie DeBus. The Frankie DeBus Show continues after this. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Showtime. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBus Show. Tusculum falls to Newberry over the weekend. Another tight one for the Pioneers by a final score of 38-31. Joined by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk. And going in, we knew it would be a tight game. It's just been the, the way, the nature of these games. Last year, a two-point game and a quagmire. Had some rain. Odd weather day, I think, in South Carolina. And the way the game started, I thought, was a bit odd. And then once we got settled in, 
they dominated the game by field position, especially in the second and third quarter. Yeah, field position uh, was key. You know, I thought going into the game, the team that actually made the least amount of mistakes was going to win the football game, and uh, I still think that held true. We made a few more mistakes than they did, but their punter did an unbelievable job pinning us inside the five-yard line four different occasions, and uh, you can't really do much offensively when you get in that situation, and uh, we didn't do a very good job stopping them from running the football, and we weren't able to run the football, and just a game of big plays and a game of mistakes, and uh, if, I, if we could have just one or two of those plays back or make one or two of those plays, in our favor, we're, we're sitting here with different results, but uh, that's uh, literally the way the ball bounced on, on Saturday. Their punter did a great job pinning us inside the five, and it took a lot of our offensive firepower away. There was a team, of the, the Pioneers against Newberry, that going in knew that this would have to be a game that the offense would have to move the ball, move the chains against a very good defense. Maybe the best defensive front we'll see this year? Uh, definitely the best we've seen to this point. You know, Brian, we're we're a good enough football team to be sitting here with a completely different record. I'm not going to talk mm -hmm. about exactly how many, but we're a few plays away from being uh, feeling really good about this. I think we've we have uh, not won to three really good football teams. You know, I don't know how many games Virginia State will win or how many Lenore Ryan will win or anybody will win, but we have uh, we've played three really good teams with a few plays go our way. Uh, you know, we got different results, but. Uh, we got to learn from this and move on, and, and they do. Their, their defensive front is as good as we've seen yet. Uh, I think a lot of their other talented positions, skill positions, are as talented as anybody we've faced as, as well. We'll see some of those plays, and we'll understand the learning curve still for somewhat of an inexperienced offense, especially under center, and that's some of those at the wideouts. Let's pick up our first half highlights. We will start with the very first drive of the game as we'll jump right into the contest. Tusculum and Newberry meeting for the 18th time from Newberry, South Carolina, and a great opening series for your defense. Great job defensively. Emmanuel Bumbley there making a big play, flying around for us at defensive line. Emmanuel had a great ball game, was nominated for one of the players of the week, and uh, you know, here's some misfortune happens for them, and we got them in third and long, and thank goodness we've got them in third and long. You know, they, uh, they wanted the ball, we wanted to kick, and we end up making them punt on the first possession, which is, you know, a, a great feeling for us. And, we needed to go over there and make some good things happen, and we were able to. And their punter, again, this is a phenomenal punt. I mean, good gracious. <laughs> Evan Altizer, one of our uh, sophomore receivers, just does an unbelievable job getting back there, getting his hands on the ball. I thought he was going to squeak out of here and score, but just great job uh, turning a, a long punt and field position into our favor. Yeah, you Kyle Clark, a case of out kicking your coverage. You didn't have to worry about that the rest of the time because he had the end zone to aim for the rest of the game. So the Pioneers start on their first drive on offense. Uh, getting a three and out by the defense, Lancaster and Isaac Robinson with the quick run. And then you'll see the pressure, um, Al Stevis Squirewell coming off the left end. Good player. Uh, we, we made a mistake up front, but Luke's got to hang on to the football there. Regardless, I know I've obviously been in that position before, literally, when you get blindsided, but you got to find a way to hang on to the ball. And uh, we, we hold them to three and out, and they end up, we end up turning it right back over to them. And we blow our backs, though. Defensively, I was really proud of how we, we stepped up here and kept them out of the end zone. And... Uh, you know, where we, we went out there with a the mentality to stop them and did a great job stopping them. A Newberry team that's on the drive, first and 10, Braxton Ivory, one of the two quarterbacks used, did not see Raleigh Yeldell, the most experienced quarterback coming back to Newberry from a year ago. He was injured. Ivory then looking for a pass, thought this one may be picked initially, but a good play by Cam Thomas. Yeah, Cam played well. He gave up one play that, uh, unfortunately, playing the position he plays, you got to shake it off, and I think he did, but he did a good job of re rebounding, and we're putting pressure on him here, and... Uh, Great job here by Cam Thomas making a big play and giving us the ball back. So he didn't get the first one, but he definitely got the second, his third of the year, tying him for the moment with the team leader in Martez Tompkins. So Newberry would kick a field goal, and we would move to after the kickoff. And uh, Kyle Clark, the kickoff, didn't have as much fortune kicking off as he did punting the ball. And again, this just goes to show, this was my key to the game, actually. Into the wind, if the ball's going to hang up, we need to get return yards, and Kenny Funny does that. Great job here by our kickoff return unit. Kenny hitting the crease. Great job right there by Rodnell Cruel making a big block on the kicker. And I'd like for Kenny to go ahead and score, but a big return gives us a football inside our red zone and uh, sure makes a different uh, way that, that you feel calling the game in this situation. Great job here uh, by Ken Drummond out there blocking for uh, Justin Houston to get some yards and 
a great cut there and moving the chains once again. Justin Houston, very used a lot, I should say, in this first quarter. And that first quarter that the Pioneers didn't have the football, we'll touch a little bit more about that too. Isaac Robinson bouncing it outside on third down and a yard, getting the first down after two quick catches by Justin Houston. And then Newberry bowed their backs as well. Yeah, they're running to the ball right here. I saw this one happen and watching on film. They were sort of like they knew what we were going to call, but they, they step up here and keep us from doing what we want to do. And, but, uh, you know, we're patient. We don't turn it over. Uh, Luke, uh, this is fine. Thought where nobody can get it but us. And, you know, we're protecting Luke up front at this point in time. Again, we've, we've made some changes and things are – you know, starting to look up for us, but we just got to try to find a way to get the ball in the end zone. Second consecutive game, though, for Lancaster. His statistical numbers not very good uh, as he gets under the way, but the defense, again, kept him in it. Will Tommy comes in from 25 yards and would sneak it through the upright, and the game would be tied in the first quarter. We move to the second quarter of action for the Pioneers, and uh, again, Kyle Clark, this is the weapon. This is basically turning the game around with what he's able to do with his Absolutely. foot. Absolutely. This thing just makes a great bounce for them, and we get it on the two, uh, maybe the one here. I'm not even sure, and we just got to try to get it out and get us a big first down, and can't really do a lot when you're pinned back there like this, but you know, we do a good job moving the football and getting us out of the hole there. We just, uh, again, great kick by them, and you know, we, we moved it. We, I think is this one we get the first down we have to play. Yeah, we actually, yeah, we Josh actually Jackson, I'm telling you, Josh Jackson for five, for three, for two, for seven, for three. You used him. You're picking up third down, third down and two, third down and one as well. So you're getting some space, and that's what we kept talking about in the game too. Uh, if we could just get ourselves some space and, and an opening, then the Pioneers would be able to do something offensively. And Josh Jackson allowed that to happen for you. Josh was running the ball hard. Uh, making some guys miss and getting some hard right here's a hard two yard run we'll take it every single time being tough and josh has been a big surprise for us there in the backfield and uh, here we just got to make that catch i don't know if it was a hit by their defender or not but heaven's got to hang on to the football so second down and 10 looking for justin houston another problem justin's got to hang on to the football way too many drop balls on the day i can tell you that so the pioneers face third down and 10 and lancaster really thought he was just throwing this one away well, I didn't know where he was throwing it, but thank goodness we got Kenny Funny on our team. He makes a great catch, and I think their safety thought it was going to the other guy as well, and Kenny just catches it and outruns him. And, uh, Kenny had some family members there, the guy in the white T-shirt there on about the 30-yard line standing up, so I met a family member of Kenny, so I know they were happy. He's from the lower state of South Carolina, and uh, great, uh, great job by him. That was a great individual play by, by, Kenny, by Kenny Funny to get in the end zone. So Kenny Funny for the Pioneers, 74-yard touchdown catch and run for the most part, saving uh, what appeared to be a throwaway. And the Pioneers took a lead in the first half at 10-3, to but Newberry would come right back. A penalty-aided drive after a decent kickoff return as well, and Blair would find Cook for, for six, and they would tie the game at 10. Nice throw, nice route. You can't really defend that if the ball's thrown well. And we gave them, I think, three first downs on that drive by penalties and cannot do that. We talked about it going in. Least mistakes will win the ball game, and penalties were killing us at that point in time. So the Pioneers, Newberry driving, and Martez Tompkins just attacking the football. Great play by Martez. Second time this year he's picked off that very same route, and this time he just decides to outrun the quarterback. And Happy for Martez, young man from down in Atlanta, Georgia, making some big plays, really playing well for us at corner. And, Got to keep his finger down right there. That pen actually should have came back to about the 25-yard line and not been a touchdown. But I know we're excited, but we got to go celebrate with our teammates and not uh, not celebrate as individuals. We're lucky we got to get a touchdown to stand. Martez with his fourth interception of the season, leading the conference there. Of course, his first touchdown. The point after was good. Touchdown led 17 to 10. Pioneers bend but wouldn't break. Um, fourth down and four, Kyle Clark would punt it away with just a few seconds remaining in the first half, and it would be downed at the one-yard line. And uh, this time, Josh Jackson didn't have a whole lot of room to run, couldn't get out of there, so Can Cantrell comes in, tries to rush a punt, and didn't get all of it. Yeah, we got to do a little better job there. I mean, Hunter uh, knows they're coming. We talk about being backed up. We practice being backed up, one-stepping it and getting it out of there, and not expecting to hit a monstrosity of a punt, but we got to do better than that. And then here we got a young man that uh, just doesn't do what he's supposed to do, and they, they have a great call. Uh, hats off to them for making a good call. Uh, that's one of those plays in the game I'd really like to have back, but uh, uh, they executed there at the end of the ball and in the half, and that really hurt us. That's gutsy. Eight seconds left in the, in the game. You know, even if he completes that and goes down, how much time could there be left? Well, I actually was telling the guys up top they're going to do something, keep the ball in the middle field. They have a timeout. They're going to burn timeout and kick a field goal. That's what their thoughts were. Probably we thought they could run a, a pass and get 10 or 12, call timeout with a few seconds to go. And 
unfortunately, we opened the gate and they took advantage of it. Well, it was something that came out and was great for Newberry, obviously, but it was a big blow for the Pioneers. But Tuscaloosa would have the receive the kickoff of the second half, see if there will be any magic for them. Come back, you'll want to see it with more of the Frankie the Bus Show. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Lewis looking, left-hander gets rid of it, throws it deep, it's gonna be picked off at the 40. At the 35, spinning is Cam Thomas, and he'll go down at the 26, but it's a turnover and the Pioneers have the ball leading 24-21. This is Cam Killer Thomas, and let's get back to the game once again, Ryan State. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBun Show. Tusculum and Newberry tied at 17 at the half. We talked about the importance of getting off to the great start. The defense comes out and, and does their part limiting the offense three and out. The offense had a chance to move it, had the fumble, but you stayed in the football game and outside of maybe two plays, um, really you could have either a two touchdown or a one touchdown lead. We actually played a really good first half. We didn't play air free, but we're not going to usually anyways as a football team goes, but made some plays, played well enough defensively, kept them out of the end zone, big interception in the end zone. Their punter again did a great job pinning us twice inside the five in the first half. and. Uh, just a play here or there, and we are probably up instead of tied. One, the Pioneers got a touchdown out of. Second, Newberry got a touchdown out of the punt inside the five-yard line. Well, the Pioneers received the second-half kickoff tied at 17. Let's take a look at your second-half highlights as the Pioneers received the football to start the second half, and it didn't take long for Tusculum to strike in the second half. Now, just a little flip of the screen out there and two great blocks. I'm telling you, I don't know the people. Rob Nell Cruel right outside there and Justin Houston. There's the first cut. Justin Houston gets him on the ground. Rob Nell Cruel doing a great job just battling number two, knocking him off balance, about to get a knock down there and lays his body out. And then Kenny Funny just makes it look easy, but very athletic and uh, takes it to the house. And what a great way to start the second half. Kenny Funny taking it to the house. So he has two catches for 149 something yards and a couple of touchdowns in the game. Leader in the country in receiving yards, or I should say leader in the conference in receiving yards per game, and is in the top five in the country, especially after this week. The adjustment for the defense was this play, where the fullback would switch to one side of the line and the running back would follow him. And basically it's, as my old counterpart would say, Barry Carter, they were out mooring us in the first half. <laughs> well, defensively they made that adjustment, made it really tough and a good, good pursuit here. Yeah, we did. We made some more adjustments at halftime and uh, did a good job. They uh, they weren't able to do what what we what they had been doing to us. But uh, uh, again, man, here goes another punt inside the five yard line. Just sort of demoralizing to watch it again, Brian. To be honest with you. So the Pioneers, who lead the game right now at 24 to 17, forced that punt, unable to move the ball out, would have to punt it back to Newberry. They have it right here. This is Baptiste Staggers on a jet sweep. He would come around the left end. He would tie the game on the Ryan Jansen kick to make the score 24-24. Pioneers would get it. They would be unable to move it, have to punt it away. Again, not a great punt for Cantrell. So the drive begins at midfield for Newberry. And again, the defense getting after it. DJ King, Iram Aiken, and Martez Tompkins. Flying around in there, making some plays. And uh, we're starting to do a little bit better. You know, we're putting pressure on him when he's got to throw it. We, we didn't get a sack on the day. We sure would have liked to have gotten one there. But good job running to the football. And, you know, if we get them in third and four, third and five, at least we feel like we got a chance here and we're, we're, we're flying around. They get a penalty to back them up a little bit. So things are going our way a little bit here. And Braxton Ivory, not the best passer. He finished one for five on the day and rolling out, looking downfield again. Good coverage by Martez Tompkins. Great job by Tez. Just, uh, he's playing really well right now, playing with a lot of confidence. And Addison Williams, our secondary coach, done a good job with those guys back there. Guy who left in the first quarter because he was injured comes in with one arm. That's Al Stevis Squirewell. That is a club. That is a cast, but it is well padded. Makes the interception on Lancaster and breaks the tie. Yeah, those will kill you now. And I know uh, Luke didn't see him. He's a defensive end that dropped into coverage, and uh, he makes a good catch. Uh, one armed and all, and gets in the end zone, and those, those are the plays that will really hurt you. Go back and forth. Tusculum, no field position again in the third and early in the fourth quarter, and really on their scoring drive here late, and Newberry. Uh, just a time-consuming drive, six minutes and six seconds 
12 plays. They went just 49 yards in that time, and Braxton Ivory scores the touchdown to make it 38-24. to Pioneers drop the kickoff, so here they are backed up inside the 10, down two scores. Yeah, we dropped that ball there as well. We got to make those catches, and uh, again, just too many mistakes, and that's why we're sitting here with a, with a loss, unfortunately. And Great job here by Justin Houston making a big catch and getting us a big first down, getting us out of the hole. Penalty for a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit that came after the whistle as well on Justin Houston, who was really beaten up in the football game as well. It's a very physical contest. Lancaster uh, avoiding the sack here, getting out of pressure. But again, it was first, second, and third downs, weren't, or first and second down, not very successful, and just missing Altizer here. Yeah, boy, if he had just put a little bit more out there, Evan actually had a step on him. And we go back to that in a little bit and just try to have some life, and Evan makes a great catch a little later if it's on here. But uh, again, we're, uh, we're moving the ball. We're having some success. We just can't afford to make the mistakes that we're making. Delay of game penalty. Right here's the play you're talking about. Altizer, once again, three guys around him. It hasn't mattered this year for Altizer. Somehow makes the catch. That's a great catch. You know, you, you see it in slow motion there. I saw it on film earlier. But great job of Evan going up, battling for the ball, believing he's going to come down with it. And he, uh, he sure as the world does. So just a big-time catch there. And we needed something positive to happen. And, Evans, the guy that gave it to us. Pause on third down and 15. Dunsclam wasn't great on third downs on the day, but came up with it. First and second down, Lancaster would look for Altizer again, just unable to connect with Evan Altizer. Yeah, boy, we're lucky right here. We didn't throw a pick, and Justin almost brings it down. And uh, we got to be smarter with the football, especially in a game like this. And we're getting tight right here. This is the one you're referring to, and they do a good job covering us. And uh, they didn't, they didn't bite on the fake. It is a, a, a difficult game when they drop eight in coverage, and I'm sure Lancaster wasn't ex fully expecting it. But this is a big play here. Third down and 10, Jackson for eight yards, so it's fourth down and two. You, your hope's resting right here on this play. And, and a guy out of the backfield who's had two drops on the day as well makes a nice catch. Nice throw. I mean, that's a, that's a very positive thing to happen here, fourth and two. And we had a freshman coming out of the backfield. Luke did a great job there. And, just, uh, again, being smart with the football here, getting us inside the five-yard line and not, uh, not putting any, any crazy throws into the end zone. We end up getting a touchdown. Lancaster would scramble there for 10 yards, so it is first down and goal from the five. And uh, this is almost too easy at times for Lancaster. When Justin, when he has the time, and he had the time, I think that was key, even though the blitz was coming. But he also knew he had Justin Houston coming Great open. throw, great route, good call. We thought they were coming there, and just a well-executed play for a touchdown. So the Pioneers would cut the deficit 38-31. to They just really wouldn't get the football back. Newberry did a really good job with that time of possession. Looking through some of the numbers, 40 minutes, 29 seconds, 19 and change for you. Uh, I know you're a quick strike offense, and I, and I know in talking with defensive coordinator Mike Iese, you'd like to see that number even out a little bit. Last week against LR, it did. Uh, this week against Newberry, good plan for them, and they just they converted on the critical third downs when they needed them. Well, we did have some you know, one-play scoring drives on the one we hit Kenny on for 75 yards, and uh, you know, but, but there, there were plenty of other three and outs. We've got to uh, do a little better job on first and second down to keep us out of third and long. And, uh, that, that time possession does creep up on you. That's a little bit skewed there. We've got to do a little bit better job, one, getting them off the field when we get them in second and third down. We've got to keep them from getting big plays, but we also got to move the ball offensively and find a way to, to convert when we get ourselves in third down. Oh, it's going to be a great game anyway between these two teams, and it just seemed to come down to the wire once again. With 18 times now that they have played, 11 games have been decided by seven or less, and this is just another one on the road. Uh, a lot of familiarity with not as many kids as we have, but 14 kids out of the state of South Carolina. Um, there were some heated moments in the, in the contest, but I think that is good um, for this rivalry and to keep it going, um, and it's always a competitive game. It's a great ball game, and you know Todd Knight, their head coach, is a really good guy. And we talked about it before the game, and then again after the game, uh, you look back. It seems like it's one score games or less, uh, and it's just very competitive, very heated, great rival. He's a good guy, and they got some great players, and we're very similar. It's a lot like a scrimmage when we play each other, uh, but uh, they unfortunately came out on top on Saturday. Came out on top, won their first conference game of the year, and the Tusculum Pioneers will look for theirs this week. And we'll talk about that a little later on in the program. Coming up next, there were some guys that had some big moments in the game and a chance for the Pioneers to get their first conference win that came up just short. We'll meet our players of the week when we return right after this. The Newberry Wolves defeat Tusculum 38-31. Come back with more of the Frankie DeBus Show. Your Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. 
Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show. The pioneers fall to Newberry by a final score of 38-31. to But there were some guys who had some big games once again. It's time now to meet our players of the week. On offense, Kenny Funny, the senior from Georgetown, South Carolina, out of Andrews High School, had just four receptions, but they covered 162 yards with two touchdowns. Had a kick return for 78 yards as well. He's the leader in the conference in receiving yards per game. On defense, for the second time this year, Martez Tompkins has come up with just a sensational defensive play. The sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia, out of Booker T. Washington, had an interception. It was returned for a touchdown for 59 yards. It's his first touchdown of his career. It's his fourth interception of his career and this season. And he had a breakup in the second half. Also on defense, Brandon Bartlett, the junior out of Decula, Georgia, from Decula High School, had 11 tackles. He now has 41 tackles on the season and is the team leader in that category. On special teams, Ken Drummond for the second consecutive week, the redshirt freshman out of Woodruff, South Carolina, from Woodruff High School. He had two tackles on special teams this week and did an outstanding job just doing his job. And Will Tommy, the freshman kicker out of Greenwood, South Carolina, from Emerald High School. Six kickoffs this day, had three touchbacks, and they were tough to get him into the end zone, but of his six kickoffs, five reached the end zone, two were brought out of the end zone. He averaged 64.8 yards on his kickoff, 65 is the max. He was one for one on field goals, and he was four for four in his point after touchdown attempts. Those are our players of the week. It's time now for our call of the game. We thought about this for a little while, maybe a second. Kenny Funny starting the second half. It'll be Lancaster with three wide outs to the right and one to the near side, and they will quickly go. This will be Funny, his second catch of the game, and he could go all the way. 40, 50, 40, 30. What a block by Rodnell Cruel, and Funny takes it to the house. 75 yards. We go inside the numbers with our post-game wrap-up. It was Newberry and Tusculum. Newberry winning 38-31, the most important numbers. But Tusculum, the number one team in the conference in gaining first downs, picked up only 14 on this day, and we'll tell you why a little later. Newberry had 22 first downs on the day. Tusculum 36 yards rushing to Newberry's 336. Tusculum passed for 298. Newberry passed for just 71, as Lancaster was 18 of 44 with a pick. 7 of 18 for the Newberry quarterbacks with two interceptions. 64 plays, 334 yards of offense for Tusculum. 84 plays, 407 yards of offense for the Newberry Wolves. Time of possession, the reason why you don't have many time when you don't have many first downs, because Tusculum had the ball just for 19 minutes and 18 seconds. A lot of that quick scoring drives but 40 minutes and 42 seconds for Newberry. On third downs, Tusculum 5 of 16, Newberry was 6 of 20. Fourth downs, 1 of 1 for Tusculum, 2 for 2 for Newberry. And in the red zone, didn't get there often, but when we did, we were good. 2 for 2, Newberry was 4 of 5 in the game. When we come back, we'll wrap it up for the Frankie DeBus Show. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. This will be Marshall, makes a move at the 10 to the five, walks into the end zone, touchdown, Pioneers. Brian Marshall's second career touchdown. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBus Show. Tuskillum falls to Newberry this past week, and we'll look to turn their chances around against the Brevard Tornadoes. But, Coach, before we really talk about Brevard, we talk about creating our own successes. And I think there's about six, maybe even seven, maybe even four plays this year that we could just eliminate from some other games. And things are a totally different. And I think, number one, young quarterback, and he's got to eliminate the big mistake. And that big mistake is the, the pick six. And I think, you know, for Lancaster and for his success, um, you eliminate that from him, then this whole season could be turned around. Not just pinning it right on him, but there are plays like that that we can point out just about every game. Yeah, I really, Lucas played probably better than I even anticipated him mm -hmm. playing in a, in a lot of phases of the game. He's making some 
some really good decisions, some really good throws. He's running the offense like we need him to. He's really uh, he's sort of playing above his age, quite frankly. You know, he only played in three or four JV games last year, and now he's played in four varsity games this year, a real college action. But he does. He does have to, to minimize some of those mistakes, especially the major ones. You know, he's making some good throws. He's making some bad decisions, and, of course, that's the nature of that position. But uh, when you throw an interception, it results into a touchdown. It really, really – that's a huge momentum swing in a lot of ways, and, and we we got to eliminate that. You're right, and we've had, uh, I guess, three of those this year, and hopefully that's we're not going to have any more. You have two guys on your team that have close to 100 receptions between both of them, and then it really falls off and drops off. Do you anticipate teams scheming towards that, or are you already seeing teams trying to stop Houston and Funny? They that are. Matter? Yeah, they are, Brian. Teams are trying to stop three and eight, as they always say. Trying to, you know, but. Those guys, uh, Mark Kolb does a great job putting them in positions that we can get them the ball regardless what other teams want to do. And I'm sure they're going to have some ideas and drop an eight or whatever. we got to figure out a way to, 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 to move the football no matter if three and eight's involved and get them the ball when we need to get them the ball. And Mark will do a good job of that. He always has. And those two guys are special football players. And it's evident right now that they're sort of carrying this offensively. we just got to keep trying to work, find a ways to give them the ball. All right. This is a Pioneer team that's going to take on a Brevard side that – Lost a lot to graduation last year, and the same could be said for the Pioneers as well. But you're going to go, I'm hoping they have jet lag that lasts all week. Here's a team that goes to southern Utah, maybe some, some Coach Hamilton ties still there on that part of the country. But, um, you know, they have, uh, this is a team that's running a, that running style, that they run that, that option attack, and that's given the Pioneers fits in the past, especially at Brevard. It, uh, it definitely has. We have gone to Brevard years similar to this. Our record similar to theirs, like you know, and, and they found a way to to uh, put together a good game plan and be in the ball game or find a way to win the game in overtime, whatever it is. We're gonna have our hands full. I mean, I respect Paul Hamilton so much for what he's doing over there. And uh, you go into every game and they look at each, them, them, themselves versus the opponent, and uh, they may be a little bit out man, but they're so gritty and fight and find a way to stay in the ball game. And you know, just just uh, two weeks ago against Wingate, they were in it for a long time. They had some bad, some things happen, some misfortune, but. They will have a plan together that uh, will keep us from getting the football. We've got to find a way to stop the run from a defensive standpoint. We've got to find a way to move the chains offensively, and it'll be a four-quarter battle. I just, I just remember with Bill Cordell a couple of years ago, I don't think we punted and still lost the football game. Uh, it was just turnovers. one of those games. With five turnovers, mm -hmm. and, and anything can happen on any given night. All right, that's Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBunch. The Pioneers take on the Brevard Tornadoes this coming Saturday. Be sure to join us on the Pioneer Sports Network. Our coverage will begin at 3 o'clock with kickoff at 4 o'clock. Pioneers fall to Newberry, but it's very early in the season. We're looking to turn this thing around. Likely can do that against the Brevard Tornadoes, and with the win, sky's the limit. For everyone involved with the Frankie DeBus Show, Matty Carr this week stepping in for Luke Manning, for Nathan Humbert, for Coach Frankie DeBus, I'm Brian Staden, and until next week, go Pioneers. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk. Featuring coaches interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by your Greenville Light and Power System. Serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity.